I'm Rebecca Ball and I'm a freshman at the University of Arkansas. Today I'll be discussing Denny Haskey's sculpture, Courage to Lead. This bronze sculpture is located on the campus of the University of Arkansas in Fayetteville. Before his career as a prominent artist, Haskey worked as a ski instructor, a raft guide, and a carpenter, building his own furniture. It wasn't until after visiting a sculpting show with his mother in Loveland, Colorado, that Haskey finally realized what he wanted to spend his life doing, creating art. Haskey began his career in art at age 38. He held an apprenticeship under a local artist, Fritz White. As a member of the Potawatomi Citizen Nation, Denny's artwork is heavily influenced by Native American culture. Courage Lee depicts three Indian warriors leaning back and shooting arrows into the sky. This is a traditional ceremony that signals a warrior's preparation to enter battle. Don Moore and James Kunzelman gifted this piece to the university in 2003. Arkansas is home to many Native Americans and is part of the history of the Trail of Tears. Because of this, the sculpture is a perfect fit for the area. It opens conversations not only appreciating the art, but also appreciating the culture. At first sight, one can see the realism of Courage to Lead. The organic lines of the piece direct the eye upward towards the tips of the arrows. The lines are also used to create texture that reflects the human body, rougher in places and smoother in others. The sculpture is interesting to look at because there is very little negative space. At every turn of perspective, there is something to catch the eye. Native Americans have a deep tan skin tone. This coloring is reflected in the bronze of the sculpture. This material only adds to the realism of the piece. However, the bronze reflects the sunlight to give the subjects of the sculpture an almost godlike gleam. This makes the warriors seem all the more powerful and reinforces the leadership that they portray. As I mentioned earlier, Haskew is a member of the Potawatomi Citizen Nation. This shows that Courage to Lead falls under the biographical and autobiographical methodology. The sculpture is a clear depiction of his people's history. Much of Native American culture is passed through generations by word of mouth. By creating a physical depiction of the important ceremony, Haskew has ensured that his heritage will be remembered long after he is gone. Although he is likely did not participate in this ritual, it is an important part of his culture to understand. This sculpture closely resembles Impressionism. Impressionism began in the 19th century in Paris. Impressionism is about capturing an interesting subject. It has been decades since Native Americans have prepared for battle. However, Haskey chose this ceremony as the subject of his sculpture. He did not choose this subject because of ongoing battle. Rather, he chose this because of his people's history was important to him. This is one indication that Haskey is inspired by Impressionism. Impressionists studied the way lighting would aid their artwork. Because Courage to Lead is installed outside, the natural lighting affects the way it is viewed. The piece is installed in a place that really lacks sunlight. There's no doubt Haskew anticipated the way light would reflect off of this piece. The organic appearance of the piece is reflective of Impressionist sculptures. The style of Courage to Lead is reflective of The Thinker by Auguste Rodin. The sculpture has a similar appearance. It is also a bronze sculpture in the round with expressive lines. This is yet another example of the Impressionist influence on Haskey's work. Haskey's work also seems to be strongly influenced by the late 18th and early 19th century romantic movement. The noble savage is the concept that humanity was born to live harmoniously with nature, free from vice, but was corrupted by civilization in the process. An example of this is Francois Rude's sculpture, Departure of the Volunteers. This piece depicts men answering the call to arms to defend their country. Their unrelenting dedication to defending their people is reflected in Courage to Lead. In both pieces, one can see the determination in the expressions of the subjects. Our textbook describes the figures and departure of the volunteers as caught up in the romance of their enthusiasm. I think the same is true of the Native Americans in Courage to Lead. Courage to Lead can be classified as a romantic contemporary work. Although there are clear influence of Impressionism and Romanticism, this piece was created in the 1990s, well after the time periods of these movements. On my walk to class every day, I pass Courage to Lead. This exquisite piece never fails to catch my eye. The sculpture is powerful and demands attention from anyone who passes. It is especially important to me because my family is descendant from the Cherokee tribe. The sculpture acts as a powerful reminder of where I come from. Although I don't resemble that part of my heritage, a respect and pride for the culture burns inside of me. I cannot forget the strength and courage Native Americans have shown throughout history. Courage to Lead is a near-perfect interpretation of the Native American culture. It shows strength and courage and leadership, qualities I hope to have gained from my ancestors. I am proud to have such a powerful work of art on the campus I call home.